yeah hi um so this is the video part of our little extra session on the state of nature um and uh in this part i'll just briefly introduce the um the ideas of the influential thinker um thomas hobbes so thomas hobbes was born in 1588 so that's almost 500 years ago. Um, and it was a difficult uh, period in which he grew up. Um, so he was born just before the attack of the Spanish Armada to England. And he says that, it, later he said that my mother gave birth to twins, myself and fear. So it was a period of, uh, um, in, uh, in Europe, where a historic period that was um, ridden with wars, so the Thirty Years' War destroyed big parts of Central Europe. Um, the English Civil War devastated England. And so this is a time of large scale conflicts. And it's partly on the impression of that conflict that. Uh, the pervasiveness of conflict that um, Hobbes wrote his uh, his work. Um, so his main work is the Leviathan, which is published, um, but after those two wars were uh, over, 1651. And partly the goal, uh, certainly implicit in that work, is to prevent, uh, to sh sh shape a philosophical system that can prevent that war of all against all. Now, <clears throat> key ideas in um, Hobbes are, one, in the state of nature, in the absence of government, individuals will find themselves in a constant state of war. So he thinks that it, the problem as a world war, it was at this time that there is an absence of government and that will lead to a state of war. So he argues for that. The state of nature without government is a state of war. Therefore, individuals are better off by cooperating with another, making and keeping covenants or contracts than they are in a state of nature. The only way to ensure such a peaceful cooperation among people so the people will actually keep the contracts is if they submit to an absolute sovereign uh, monarch that will um, ensure that people follow the laws. Okay, so these are the key ideas in Hobbes' thinking. Now, why does he think that the state of nature is so awful? Hobbes thought that people have an intrinsic desire for power and that we naturally are roughly equal in power. We also all have the same needs. We need food, we need clothing, um, we need um, basic forms of company and so on. But unfortunately, resources are scarce. There isn't enough food for everyone. There, isn't, there aren't enough resources. There isn't enough clothing for everyone. So since we all want power, we're all roughly equal in it. We all have the same needs. We're going to be in a constant state of fighting over those resources. So that's why I thought the state of nature is going to be a state of war. He describes it in a very powerful way. In such a condition, the state of nature, there's no place for industry because the fruit of the earth is uncertain. And, the consequent, and consequently, no culture of the earth, no navigation or use of the commodities that may be imported by sea, no commodities building, no instruments of moving and removing such things as require much force, no knowledge of the face of the earth, no account of time, no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death. The left in the life of man solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, in short. So life is absolutely horrific in the state of nature. We don't, we won't acquire any knowledge about the world, can't science, 
can't do anything. We need to get out of that state of nature. The state of nature, that is the state without government, is absolutely horrific, according to Hobbes. Now, Hobbes did think that we have certain natural right. Those rights are not dependent on the laws. They're universal, every person has them. They're inalienable, that you can't, they're, they're not, you can't be taken away. In particular, Hobbes thought they have a natural right to self-preservation. That is, we have a right to look out for ourselves and preserve our own life. Okay, that's a right everyone has. Hobbes also uses the term of laws of nature. Okay. These are not these are not laws that govern physics. Uh, so they are laws that govern um, humans. Uh, so they're not moral laws. They're laws this we can that they discover by reason. So it's a quote: "A law of nature, lex naturalis, is a general rule found out by reason, by which a man is forbidden to do that which is destructive to his life." Oops destructive to his life, but take the way the means of preserving the same and to omit that by which he thinks it may be best preserved. So it's a rule and it's forbidden to take that which is destructive to his life. So he thought in particular then that there are laws of nature that tell us that it's good for us to seek peace. So every man ought to endeavor peace, you think. We should all look for peace as far as he has hopes for attaining it. So we should look for peace as far as we have hopes for attaining it. We should lay down our own right to all things and be contented with so much liberty against other men as we allow other men against themselves. So we should only allow what gives others freedom to take as much as they need. Um, and we should hold ourselves to those um, contracts that we made. Okay. So this is, I think, he thinks that we can derive that from reason, that we have an obligation to do these things. So why then does Hobbes think that on one hand we have this right to self-preservation, um, but on the other hand we have insight that we should do these things? The thing is, there's a difference between what's rational for individual, what's individual, what's good for the individual from their own perspective, and what's good for everyone. So it's individually rational for each individual to attack the others because they're looking out for self-preservation in the state of nature. And that they have a natural right to, Hobbes thinks. But it's collectively rational for everyone to make peace that we can also have insight as philosophers, we know that that's what people should do. The question is for Hobbes, how do we get from what is collectively, from what is individually rational to what's collectively rational? How do we manage to get there? So this is problems of the common good. We collectively, we, because if for each individually, it might be best to cut down a tree, another tree to plant some more crops collectively, we're going to destroy the face of the earth. We'll talk a lot more about such collective action problems in a later session. But Hobbes was the first to discover this kind of basic problem. Okay, so that is Hobbes and um, Locke we're gonna cover in the next video.